Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be trying out a few new tools, um, so please uh, be patient with me if the technology seems to be a little bit weird. Um, what I have is my iPad mirroring right now I'm going to try to use to solve the problem from Project Lead the Way IP Activity 5.7, which is about the retaining wall. So the question we're trying to answer here is we have a 15,000 pound force that's being applied on a concrete retaining wall. The location of that force is at the arrow that you see. 15,000 pound force there and the question is of course does the wall tip over so we've done this problem over and over and over again and then what we've discovered here is that we know that whenever we have let me draw off to the side here maybe down to the bottom okay when we have this retaining wall rough sketch here we know that if we push this direction in fact let's do that in a different color let's say if we push this direction with the 15,000 pound force that if we can, we'll probably tip it over this blue point down here, right? And um, we would need to know for a horizontal force, we would need to know the vertical distance between the two. So we would need to know where we're pushing. And we're going to call this the tipping force, and we're going to say that it's applied at a certain height. And that will create a clockwise, a counterclockwise, excuse me, moment going this direction, right? Okay. And so if we do force times distance, we know that we would have T times H trying to tip it over. And something is going to counteract that. And so we've also discovered that in the doing these problems that we have the weight of the object, which we're going to say, let's just guess it's somewhere around here. I don't know where that is yet. Okay, But if I know how much this concrete wall weighs, W, then I can take it times this horizontal distance right here, and we'll call that D and that will create the clockwise moment that will counteract it. Okay, So T times H is equal to W times D. And the question is, is which one of those is bigger? Is this right side big enough to withstand the force, the moment created by the left side? Which one is bigger? Okay. Now, here's what we know. Before we go any further, we know that T is 15,000 pounds. Okay. So let's start with that multiplied by. Okay, so now we need to know the height at which this is applied. So we scroll right back up and, oh man, I'm gonna have to pause the video for a second because I forgot to go look that up. Let's see here if I can find this quickly. Um, oh good, this screen's gonna stay in front of it. So let's move it off to a different window. No, what if we do this, there we go, all right. So let's go find um, our problem. This is 5.7. So scroll down, all the way down to the bottom of this assignment. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's 4.5 feet up from the base of the wall footing. So let's go ahead and let's throw that back into our equation. And uh, so we know back down here, we know that the height that this thing is applied at is 4.5 feet. Okay. Now some quick math, we can figure out how much we have on the left. The question, of course, is, is that going to be counteracted by the weight of the wall times the distance? Well, here's the problem. We don't know how much that concrete wall weighs. We have no idea. And we don't know what the distance is here to the center of gravity. We don't even know where the center of gravity is, right? So we're going to have to do some work, and that's what the rest of this video is going to be. So this will be a longer video than the most because we've got a lot of stuff to do. Let's do this first. Let's go to AutoCAD, Autodesk Inventor or Autodesk Fusion 360 and let's actually build the wall. So I've already gone through and I took these specs and I created the wall in Fusion 360. Here it is. Okay. And on an Autodesk Inventor, the, the steps would be the same. You'd end up with a wall that looks about the same like this. The question that I would have, first of all, is how much does the wall weigh? Well, it's weird, but in Fusion 360, concrete is not a material that we can actually apply. Um, and Inventor, I actually don't know if you can apply concrete, and if you can, then you would just use eye properties to determine the weight of it, okay? We have to go through an extra step, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to Body Properties, and we're going to right-click on the body, and we're going to choose Properties, and it's going to tell us that the volume of the wall is 130 cubic feet. Unfortunately, because I don't know the density, I don't have concrete in here, this is made out of steel right now, that's not the actual mass. Okay, because steel is going to weigh different than concrete is. But we do know we have 130 cubic feet of material. Okay, So then we come back and we go, okay, 130 cubic feet of material. You can see then, again, like 
this is the big deal here. We have 130 cubic feet. I guess I can't mark on notes, okay? So I went to Google and I said, well, how much does concrete weigh then? Okay, density of concrete, a quick search, and you can see right here in the description, which I apparently can't go to, um, I can't mark, but it says it's 145 pounds per cubic foot. So let's, let's put that information together real quick, okay? Down here, we know then, let's mark this up, we know that 145 pounds is the weight of one cubic foot of concrete. And what I'm curious then is how many pounds would 130 cubic feet weigh? So notice the proportion that I set up. 145 pounds is to one cubic foot as X pounds are unknown is to 130 cubic feet. And the nice thing about this setup is we can cross multiply to solve and we end up with X is equal to 145 times 130. The calculator will tell us then that wall weighs 18,850 pounds. It's pretty massive, right? And that makes sense. So let's go back up here. Let's say okay. We now know the weight. That's what we just solved for. So we know that this is equal to 18,850 pounds. And we need to find out then what this distance D is in order to solve this problem correctly, right? So let's flip back into Fusion 360 and that's where this really becomes necessary, okay? I need to figure out where the center of mass of this thing is. And luckily on Fusion 360, we have a tool to do that for us. Let's go to Inspect, Center of Mass. I'm gonna click here. I'm just gonna click on the body. I'm gonna click OK. And it's gonna say there's the center of mass. And we can see it's not quite centered, right? It's not the two and a half foot mark since this is five feet wide. It's a little bit to the right of it. Okay, which makes sense because that's where the vertical piece of the weight is involved. But the cool thing is this. I can come here to my home view. I'm going to hit the inspect tool. And I want to measure the distance between this plane and the center of mass, which I'm going to get to by clicking on it in the browser over here on the left. And now I come over here and look at it from this side, and it looks like that distance is 3.115. So we come back, ready? I know then that that distance, and I put it up here, right? I know that the distance here from the, my ruler tool is 3.115 feet. So back here in my equation, I know that I can put in 3.115 feet on this side, okay? So now the question is, which side is bigger? If I take 15,000 times 4.5, I end up with a grand total on the left side of 67,500 and that unit would be a foot pound, okay? There's the moment, okay? Pounds times feet, foot pounds. If the number on the right is bigger than 67,500, we're cool. Everything is fine. The weight of the object is enough. It's not gonna tip over. But if I do this calculation on the right and it's smaller than 67,500, we have some problems. We're gonna have to make some adjustments. So let's go through and take 18,000, 850 times 3.115, and we unfortunately, we only end up with 58,717.75 foot-pounds of torque. Because this is bigger, the wall will tip over. There's the first part of the problem in this particular assignment. I know that's a long video and that's a lot of steps. But that's what we're trying to build here, guys. You're, you're in an engineering program. We need to be able to solve more complicated problems. Okay? So the whole trick here was figuring out I have a basic equation that I've used over and over again. We can see right here, right? A counterclockwise and a, and a clockwise moment counteract against each other. And then it's a job of figuring out, like, how can I find the pieces of information that I need in order to put in the unknowns into this equation and use that to actually, like, describe a situation, okay? If you have questions, further questions, hopefully that, that makes sense, but if you have further questions, please feel free to ask me in class, and we'll go through and we'll talk about the other bullet points, which are a little bit more straightforward in class. If you have any questions, talk to you later.